ABC Listen. Podcasts, radio, news, music and more. Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal land. This is ABC News Daily. We finally have a date for a referendum, with the Prime Minister arguing there's no downside to voting yes. The no case has been gaining traction. It says a voice to Parliament will divide Australia by race. Today, Fran Kelly and Carly Williams from The Voice Referendum Explained podcast on what we can expect in the six weeks before we vote. Today I announce that Referendum Day will be the 14th of October. Fran, I want to start with you because we finally have a date for the referendum and it's a big moment. We haven't had a referendum in this country for more than 20 years. We haven't had a referendum for 24 years. The last one was 99 when Australia said no to the Republic. That means, Sam, that 6.4 million Australians have never voted in a referendum. Yeah. And Fran, it was a huge moment, wasn't it, for Anthony Albanese too when he announced this date. He's got a lot riding on it. He said, vote yes, a lot of times. He did. (laughs) Over and over and over again. Vote yes. In recognition of 65,000 years of history, vote yes. He used all the positivity he could muster. It was a really... uh, rolled gold campaign stump speech in a way, as you say. In the end, though, Sam, I think it was clear listening to that that really the probably the strongest argument for the Yes campaign, and I I wonder what you and Carly think of this, is that voting no, the Prime Minister said this, voting no leads nowhere. It means making no change. And if we continue to do things the same way as we've always done them, we'll get the same results. To me, that remains the strongest argument for the Yes campaign. Carly, I don't know what you think. Yeah, it'll just be much of the same and the same isn't working. We rise to the moment like the kangaroo and the emu on our coat of arms. They never go backwards. They just go forwards. I guess a key point he was making, Carly and Fran, was he said, don't close the door on constitutional change, meaning if you don't vote yes now, you're shutting the door on it. Yeah, and that's another thing, I suppose, to remember that not only is it 24 years since we had the last referendum, although there may be, you know, polls often show us quite a strong sentiment pro becoming a republic, that hasn't come back to the people for another vote. Of course, the proposed voice would have the power to advise the parliament and the federal government on matters that affect Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. What's his tactic here, Fran? Why did he wait so long, Anthony Albanese, to make the announcement to set the date? You know, it was six and a half weeks out now from going to the ballot box. Well, he's been around a few election campaigns, Mm -hmm. Anthony Albanese, since he was a young man. He's been trying to win elections and he's very firmly of the view that a six-week campaign is the optimum way to do it. And if you go any longer than that, people tune off, they Mm. get annoyed, uh, they don't want to see their politicians distracted for very long, that six weeks is probably testing the Australian patients generally and that's the way you get your biggest bang for your buck, so to speak. So, Carly, what are we going to see, do you think, in the next few weeks? Oh, I think that we're going to be seeing a lot of social media ads. We're going to be seeing a lot a lot more ads in, in general. And I think it's really significant that the PM chose South Australia to announce mm-hmm. uh, the referendum date because South Australia is, is a crucial battleground state in this campaign. Remember, for a referendum to get over the line, a double majority must vote yes to propose changes. A double majority is a national majority 
majority of voters in the states and territories, a majority of voters in at least four of six states. But the polls suggest South Australia is voting no at this moment, don't they, Kelly? At, at this moment. So they're going on gangbusters down there. Uh, they also want to win Tasmania and they also want to win... They've ex- they're, they're expecting that there's, the no vote in Queensland is solid and will not change and that mm-hmm. WA mm-hmm. is very strong for no. So concentrating now on the smaller states of Tasmania and South Australia. And if the polls are correct at the moment, yes, is behind in those states. So at the moment it would lose just on that, you know, you need the double majority like Carly said. Yeah. But the, the Yes campaign thinks that South Australia with its history of sort of progressive movement on, you know, votes for women, for instance, they still think that they can swing that. Yeah. All right, Carly, you've also really importantly been talking to people at the grassroots community level, really trying to gauge how they're feeling about all this. I've had elders just call me this morning watching this on TV, um, you know, in tears and moved by watching Megan Davis up there, a cobble cobble woman who was an architect of the Uluru Statement. In the Uluru Statement, our people chose generosity. We chose unity. We chose real change and we chose love. And uh, Aunty B. Ballangari from Barrowville just called me and said, I can't believe it's happening. You know, she was around in the 67 referendum and she says, this completes the story. And she said, I've had my phone ringing all morning. She is out there campaigning, campaigning on the ground too. So I think that, you know, the PM's going to have a little bit of help in the next six weeks. And just to add to it, our- Carly said there in relation to your question, Sam, I think that for the Prime Minister, it's a tricky line for him. Of course, he needed to be here to kick off this campaign officially to name the date and sort of give a stirring speech to the troops and to the nation. But he also has to, of course, do his day job. Mm. And this is something that his political opponents are acutely watching and trying to leverage as a criticism of the Prime Minister that he's distracted from the real concerns of most Australians, cost of living, that kind of thing. So the government and the minister, the Prime Minister and his ministers who are going to be out and about, you know, spruiking this need to get that balance right. They're very mindful of this. Carly, tell me about Cheryl Tucker. Cheryl Kicket Tucker is a Wujuk traditional owner from Swan in Perth. She runs an organisation called Koya and uses sport to get disengaged kids back on track. And when I speak to these organisations, they say it's hard to make generational change without generational funding. Cheryl Kicket Tucker is voting yes because she hopes a voice will help make community work like hers easier uh, and easier to get the funding that she needs. And we need that thinking at all levels of government. And I know that the people that will go on to these committees, they live by this stuff. They know it, you know. So hopefully it'll trickle through to all of the departments uh, once the voice is established that we actually have to change the system because it's not working. Yeah. And Carly, you spoke to Ian. He's in northern New South Wales. And he actually is one of the people that doesn't think the voice will actually make a difference on the ground. Yeah, Ian Brown from the Gomoroi Nation, born and bred in Moree, northern New South Wales. He works to address youth crime and he's come up with a grassroots model uh, in Moree that is working and, you know, he is going to vote no because he says that the voice is redundant because it's kind of just a carbon copy of advisory models that already work. And he has seen grassroots advisory bodies advise minister after minister, and that advice often goes ignored. So he's not convinced. The key word that I keep coming back to with is advice. You know, the, the advice comes with an undertone that that's all it's only ever going to be, advice. There is no, you know, requirement of government to actually be able to respond to the advice or uh, any powers for the voice to actually encourage the Australian government to actually adhere or respond to the advice being provided. All right, now let's have a look at the no side. We heard from the country Liberal senator and no campaigner Jacinta Price after the date was announced. She says the voice will create division in society based on race. I'm not going to allow a line uh, to run straight through the middle of my family within our constitution. 
I don't expect that to take place uh, within our country, uh, to be treating Indigenous Australians differently to the rest of Australia because of our racial heritage. You know, there's so many times the Prime Minister references the referendum of 1967. That referendum came about with overwhelming support from Australians to bring about equality in our country for Indigenous people. What do you think, Fran? Can the No campaign maintain the momentum the polls are showing it already has? Well, we don't know. I suppose we don't know. Certainly the uh, the trend has been all one way since the beginning of this year. Uh, at the start of the year, there was quite a strong support nationally for yes, that's just gone one direction and that is down to the point where in almost every state except Victoria and in some polls, New South Wales and Tasmania to a lesser extent, that yes is failing. They, they have not got mm. a majority. So that's going all one way. Can the no vote maintain that momentum? Well, it's always easier to press a negative. I mean, that's just a factor. Of, yes. We have a negative vi- bias within us, all of us do. So they have a simpler job in that sense. And uh, the yes vote six weeks out are starting from behind, clearly. So they've got all the work to do, I think. Fran, just tell me, what surprised you about this campaign now that you, you're doing the podcast and you've really been delving into this? What struck you? Uh, a couple of things. Uh, one, I am struck I have always been struck by the divisiveness of this, the negativity around it and how sharp the divisions are. That does surprise me. But also what struck me is that so many people still have really no idea about the voice and what it's proposing to do. And that Mm. includes First Nations people. You know, this has been the product of a long period of consultation and talk and negotiation to get to this point. So I am surprised. There's still a lot of Australians, black and white Australians, who really don't know what this is about yet. That that does surprise me. Yeah, of course. And Carly, what about you? How do you see this playing out from here? From now, many people who haven't followed the voice referendum may start to now tune in and establish their view. This could be won or lost in the campaign and we are now in an official referendum campaign as of Wednesday and for many Australians this is our first referendum including me so bring it on. Fran Kelly and Carly Williams host the Voice Referendum Explained podcast. You can get it on the ABC Listen app. On polling day, you'll be asked to write yes or no in full in English on the ballot paper. The Australian Electoral Commission points to the law on referendums for how it will treat any ticks or crosses. It says the legal advice is that a clear tick should be counted as a formal vote and a cross should not. This episode was produced by Veronica App App, Nell Whitehead, Anna John and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is David Cody. I'm Sam Hawley. ABC News Daily will be back again tomorrow. Thanks for listening.